Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the Word of God, and it is always my hope that as we come to the end of today's broadcast, that you would have heard something uh, today that will cause you know cause you to think about the way that you have been living your life for God, cause you to think about you know that transformation that is so needed so that we can walk in continuous victory in God. But before we begin, let us pray. Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your love. I thank you, mighty God, for your grace that has been extended towards us. I thank you now, Lord, for the opportunity to go into your word. I pray, O oh God, that it will reach the hearts of your people and the lives will be transformed. I thank you, Lord, that you are the one that is in charge of the airwaves. And as such, O oh God, your word today will go forth with power and anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Friends, good morning. Good morning to you. It is such an awesome privilege to be able to come to you again in this manner and you know just to lift up the name of the lord just to praise him magnify his name because he deserves it he has been better than good to us the song says he is a good good father and when we look over our lives we can truly agree with that statement because it doesn't matter what we go through it doesn't matter what our trials and temptations are the Lord he's always there for us and we have come to learn that those trials and temptations are only to make us stronger in him all right so do not curse your trials do not curse your tribulation do not curse your troubles because they help you to grow they help me to grow and we grow in the grace and knowledge of God. That is my prayer, that I would grow in the grace and knowledge of God every single day. All right, so today we're looking at a warning against prejudice, right? A warning against prejudice. Now, that may sound like a big word for some. Some may have heard it, but they're not really sure what that means. So just to give a simple, simple definition of the word prejudice, and it is a preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. So it's like a preconceived idea, a preconception. Pre, which you know comes, means before. So long before you even have a chance to meet somebody or to experience something, you form an opinion about it, right? So it's like a preconceived notion, a preconceived idea. It's prejudgment. You get it? Right. So that's basically what prejudice is. And when we look around us, we see a, l a lot of that. We see a lot of that going on where persons are not given a chance at all to even prove themselves they are rejected at the onset because of something about them there you know there's people look at people and they they assume a lot of things about them you see somebody look a little quiet so you assume that they're a mumu well <laughs> sorry that's a phrase we use here in the bvi you assume that they're foolish or you know nothing much going on with them because they're a little on the quiet side you know so we, we can't uh assume anything about people just by looking at them because that would be a grave mistake uh, at times but when we look in the word of god we see some instructions there and these instructions are found in james chapter 2 you know apart from the book of acts which i love dearly the book of james you know happens to be one of my other favorite books of the bible i mean we all have our favorites favorites basically meaning that those ones that when you see what's written there it, it jumps out at you and it causes you to think 
and it causes you to want to make a change you know in the way that you know you have been going about your life so here goes james chapter 2 and there it's the first 13 verses that we'll be looking at but we will read and go through as we go along all right to hear what the lord is saying this morning so here goes and i'm reading from the new living translation my dear brothers and sisters how can you claim to have faith in our glorious lord jesus christ if you favor some people over others so that's a big question being asked right there at the top from the get-go it's 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 you know my dear brothers and sisters how can you claim to have faith in our glorious lord jesus christ if you favor some people over others if you love some people over others if you treat some people better than you do others all right for example this is verse 2 suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes if you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person but you say to the poor one you can stand over there or else sit on the floor well doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives and if i were to answer that question i would say a resounding yes because sometimes we just don't get it we don't have it right we look at the one that's fancily put together and we are like yes that one is worthy of special attention and as the bible says we give a good seat to that person but let the one who is poor who may not be able to put themselves together you know as fancily as the other one and you say stand over there or sit on the floor or you know whatever so they are made to feel that they are less because they don't have as much you know sometimes we even go as far as uh, trying to impose you know our own standards on even the way people look physically so you know he's not so handsome she's not so pretty so don't put her in the front you know no we, we want pretty people you know handsome people on the front so we don't want these people that kind of look you know a particular way and this may sound basic but it happens and if we are true to ourselves even as people of god we would say yes it does and we need to check that all right we need to check that verse 5 says listen to me dear brothers and sisters hasn't god chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him that's the question right because that's the criteria you know to inherit the kingdom of god it's for those who love god and if we say we love god then we have to love the people around us it is that simple some people think it's complicated it's not it's not oh well i can love them but there is always that but it's like okay i could if if things were perfect if everything was in order there's something off about no i can't love them the devil is a liar we are called to love because that is the standard by which we will enter into the kingdom of god no other standard all right because it's through love love of god love of others and love of self that we're able to even live right yes when you love god you want to please him you want to do what he says you want to be obedient you can't say you love god and then you're doing the opposite of what he says so if you love god and he says love your fellow man you have to i mean if you if you're serious about god if you really really intend to inherit the kingdom because those who are saved we say that that's what we're working towards we want to be with christ we want to go to heaven but 
will heaven be segregated? All right, that's a question and food for thought while we move on. Verse 6, but you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppress you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. And, you know, you can go ahead and just put that in the comments section. What is the royal law? I'm, I'm reading and I'm quizzing at the same time. What exactly is the royal law? Just before I read it, even if you're following in your Bible, type it in the comments. Because we need to get this thing into the depth of our heart. All right. So let me start again. And then by then, hopefully somebody can put what the royal law is. Yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. And this is what it is. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it is. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. Okay, friends, I didn't say that. Okay, that's the word of God. You are guilty of breaking the law. And you're talking about the precepts of God. You know, the law of love. The law that says love God. Love the people around you. And of course, you love yourself. But some people put self first. So it's not even love God first. It's love myself first and then you know, God comes somewhere on the equation. You know this by people who they reject God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about people who consciously they reject God. They say that they are self-made. They, they, that's the way they act anyway. It's like their achievements, whatever it is that they have, they did it all by themselves. That's what they're saying. They, they don't give any credit to any other source but themselves. So they're like little gods in and of themselves. They do not acknowledge the creator in any way, shape or form. And that is sad. That is sad because the moment we believe we, the creature, creatures in a we, the moment we, the creatures believe that we are over and above the created by our actions, that means that we're in a very sad state. Okay. So we're called to practice the royal law, which is to love our neighbor as ourselves. We must, we should. It's a command. It's the right thing to do. All right? All right, moving on. Verse 10. For the person <clears throat> who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. For the same God who said, you must not commit adultery, also said, you must not murder. So if you murder someone, but do not commit adultery, you have still broken the law. And that's the thing that uh, many, many of us, I say us, do not get. We, because a lot of us, think that we have arrived. So because we're not guilty of this particular sin over here, then we are righteous and we are holy. You understand? But the person that is doing this one, because remember we have big sin, small sin, medium-sized sin. Yes, we are aware that there are some sins that are called abominations. You understand? But because your sin don't fit in the abomination category, which, of course, you know, we, we really believe that uh, we are better because we sin in a different way or whatever. There is a little book that I read called Respectable Sins. And, you know, I can't remember the author right now, but you can check that out, you know, uh, the respectable sins, because there are some sins that some have glorified. You know, it's some sins are OK. It's OK. It's OK to gossip. That's all right. You know, that's what women do. Uh, it's OK. It's OK to to do certain things that it's not so bad. You know, uh, stealing a dollar is not as bad 
as stealing a thousand, you know. Oh, God, what? You took so much? A thousand? No, you're a thief. But a dollar is not so bad. If, if you, you should have even taken a dollar, just a dollar. No, we have to put away these foolish notions from among us. And we see it around us. We do see it. Because even, for example, in our church settings, which you know I'm going to go there because we who say that we are Christians, we have to do better. We have to do right by God, by our fellow man. And in doing that, well, we're also doing right even by our own selves. And we see it. We see where some people will come in and we are prejudiced, you know towards what's going on with them based on appearance, based on how they look. So we look at them and we say, mm -mm, that one don't belong here, you know, because I'm pretty sure if some of us see, you know, two people of the same sex walking in, linking arms, you know, we're going to be like, uh-uh, the blood of Jesus can't come in here, right? But that's where they need to come. That's exactly where they need to come. So that the message, the good news of salvation can plant a seed in their lives that will transform them from the inside out. Because the thing is, you see, we cannot impose salvation on people by just looking at them or treating them a certain way. We do not impose, we do not get people to follow Christ by the way we cause them to become segregated and separated and we do this and we shove them over there and shove them here and then you know we expect them to see christ in us the best way to win somebody is to model christ before them in other words we don't talk about it we live it we show it it doesn't make sense because you know from time to time we talk a lot and, and, and I'm talking to you too, Diane. We talk, we talk a lot, but can we be honest with ourselves? Because sometimes we talk about what we would do if the unsaved comes among us. And when they do come, it's a different story, right? We don't treat them right. We cause them to feel like castaways, all right? That's, that's not right. That is not the gospel of Christ. That is not you know, loving your neighbor as yourself. So we have to check that. We have to check that attitude where we believe that because their sin is public, you know, and yours hidden, that you're better, my God, but for the grace of God. If the Lord were, you know, not merciful at times, many, many people could not even go in the church and touch his holy things, cannot without repentance, because that's what, you know, some of us do. We play around and then we run up in God because nobody knows or we think nobody knows what we did. And then we go and we perform just the way we normally do. But let someone come in that it's showing like someone got pregnant out of wedlock. Let them come in with their big belly. And that's public, you know, that's something coming up. You can't hide that. But that scene, right? It's obvious. But what about those who are committing the act of fornication, you know, and utilizing birth control means? And then that same person, you know, same one, same fornicator, comes and sees that one who came in with the evidence of what they are doing. Then they start to chastise and murder and kill them. That cannot work. We, we are hypocrites. I say that again, whenever we act like that, we, we in the body of Christ who act this kind of way, we are hypocrites. We preach one thing and we practice another and it cannot work. And prejudice and those things have no place in the body of Christ. Does it happen? Of course it does. But I really want to know which heaven some of us plan to go because the kind of behaviors that some of us are displaying here. No wonder the Bible says that we shall be changed. Because this flesh and this kind of body and these kind of things cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We must be changed. But just before that time comes, the Lord is admonishing us 
to watch the way we live amongst our fellow people. Watch the way we live amongst our brothers and sisters in the Lord and even those who have not yet come into the fold. Watch the way we live. We cannot pander. Listen now, don't get me wrong. We cannot pander to the sins of people because we must present the gospel. We must. People should not be comfortable in their sins, sitting among us day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. There should be something in the message of Christ that we present that not only convicts them, but cause them to become converted. So what do we do in the meantime? We love them through the gospel. We love, we push Christ, but we push it in a loving way. We don't stuff Christ down people's throat. We cannot save anybody. We can only plant the seed and hope that they take root and they germinate into something beautiful. You understand what I'm saying? So let's cut out the, the prejudice that we have, even amongst ourselves as believers, because this one, you know, um, speaking in tongues at every service, some people who you see behave a certain way, some of it is flesh, some of it is show, all right? Some of it is performance. Some people, they have perfected the art of acting, perfected it. They know when to dip. They know when to shout. They know when to cut our tongues here. You understand? And sometimes if you don't have godly discernment, people fool you even in the very church. You understand? All right, let me come back here. Let's read the last two verses. And then I have something else to mention surrounding this whole prejudice topic today. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, me, if Diane has been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges me. All right, so let's put our names in that last verse, verse 13. All right. For those who just joined in, we're reading James chapter two and I'm at verse 13. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if Diane has been merciful, God will be merciful when God judges Diane. That's really how that works. So we have to remember mercy. We have been shown mercy, so we should extend it to others, extend it to our fellow man. There are times when we slip up. Yes, we slip up. What do you do? You repent. You ask the Lord for forgiveness. If it's somebody that, you know, we transgressed against where we actually, you know, caused that person to feel like a nobody, it's okay to go and apologize and say, I'm sorry. I judged you wrongly. You know, I'm sorry. Listen, we are a practical, we must become a practical set of Christians. We cannot just be saying these things, friends. We have to do them. We have to actually go out and practice them. Try it. Try it. Try apologizing to somebody who you know that you, you did something against. Try it. Yeah, you, you know, the royal law, love your neighbor as yourself. How would you want to be treated or how would you like to be treated if the shoe was on the other foot? All right. You know, one of the prejudices that, that we see going on, even in our community, in our churches, where persons who are from different places in the world, wherever they are from, they are rejected because of where they are from. My son, when he went to high school, I, I never heard him with it in primary school. But when he, he came, he would come home from high school in the days. And if someone acts a bit funny around him, he would say, hmm, you're a... And he would call a particular nationality. I wouldn't say the nationality. All right. He would call and I heard him with it more than once. And one day I said to him, I said, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. What are you talking about? Why every time somebody acts a particular way, 
you describe them as this particular nationality. And he said, well, that's what they say in school. And it's a big joke. And I said, I said, cut it out. I said, stop it. I said, those people are just as important in God's sight as your people. I told him that. I said, stop it. I said, when you hear your friends doing it, do not join in with them. It is wrong. God loves the nations of the world. Nobody created anyone. None of us have the power to create anybody, right? Man has been trying to clone people and create life for the longest time, but they can't blow breath in them. They try it with a sheep and the, that sheep, dolly, the sheep, dolly dead long time. All right. So there, as technology advances, that's good. But man cannot give life. Some are busily taking it, but they can't give it. All right. So you cut that out. And I set my son straight because it was like a culture that was developing where we believe that people from a particular place are worse than because their country is experiencing certain struggles. Listen, we could have been there but for the grace of God. You understand? Anybody at all could have been in that situation but for the grace of God. A lot of nations sometimes believe that they're better than other nations because they are rich and they have resources. But listen, it take one tornado, one hurricane, one natural disaster and it's over for that country. When you look, you see people scattered about, running to the same places that they used to criticize for shelter and for help. So that is why we have to be careful how we treat people of a certain nationality among us. Any nationality, we're all equal in the sight of the living God. And a lot of us, we know that, you know, but sometimes we allow the enemy to just come in and fool us. And it is foolishness. We need to cut it out. Some people say, I would never, some ladies, I would never marry a man from that country. Really? Suppose I him God have for you. No wonder some people are married because they're too picky and they're too choosy. Right? God gives the best to those who leave the choice to him. So a lot of women, and I'm on some women case now, you're still single because your ideals are not realistic. You understand? Stop being prejudiced. Stop saying, I don't want this and I don't want that. And I know, and you know, God gives the best to, to those who leave the choice to him. So if you say, okay, God, you know, I know you have this person out there for me. Whichever country he come from, whichever country she come from, once that's the person for me, Lord, that's the person for me. I will accept your gift to me. Because a lot of people want to think that, okay, you know, um, I'm from this place, so I need somebody from this place as well. I had a friend, right? And even she herself, I had to tell her, cut it out, right? And she pretty much is from a particular ethnicity. Let me put it that way. And she was against the people of her own ethnicity. She said she would never marry a man from that particular ethnicity. Right? And I'm like, are you for real? Are you kidding? Suppose that's the person that God has for you. No, 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 no. Basically, she was saying God would have to keep him. You see? But this is somebody who wants to get married. Come on. Come on, friends. All right. I'm, I'm still talking about prejudice here because you have these preconceived ideas about people and places and things and they're just not right. If that's what the Lord is leading you to, you just have to go that way. So get rid of all of those other things, the blockages and watch and see if you would not feel more fulfilled in your life, especially if you say that you're a Christian especially because you see while you expect the world to indulge in these practices people of God know we're different we should walk a different kind of way we're not better than no we are not but we cannot join with the world we cannot join with the devil and do the things that he does or the things that he suggests and think that we're pleasing God no let us change, change the way we treat people. 
just because of how they look or where they come from or whatever, right? It doesn't matter, right? We could have been there, but for the grace of God. There's one thing, you know, that I always say, Lord, I thank you that I was not born into a religion that does not accept you. But I have friends who are of these other religions and I love them, you know, and I hope to God that one day, you know, they would come into the knowledge of Christ and what he has done. But you cannot say, oh, those people. And that's how we are, you know, those people. So we are over here and they're over there and it's them against us. No, no people of God. Let's cut those things out. God is not pleased with that kind of thing, right? Let's get it from among us. Let's root it out. Don't let it spread among us like a cancer. Let's look at people differently. Let's view people through the eyes of love. Because that's the thing. We're funny beings and all. We want love. We want to be accepted. We want this and we want that. But we're not willing to extend it to others. We are not. So we have to change that. Get rid of the thing that that country is so bad and you don't want to have nothing to do with those people. I know there are some people who say that they have been hurt by people of particular whatever. And when they look over their lives, it's always these people. No, no come on. It, because, you see, we get in life exactly what we expect. Because you went in with that notion, that's exactly what you ended up with. I remember living at a particular place. I was living at this, at this house right here in BVI and I had a neighbor and, you know, we, we, we would just say hi and, and pass. Neighbor, you know, right next door. And then one day the neighbor literally came and knocked on my door and said, Diane, where are you from? And I told her and she's like, no, 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 you can't be from Jamaica. I told her, I said, why, why not? She said, every Jamaican that I've dealt with have been like, you know, this and that, you know, and she gave her descriptions. And I said, really? But you're different. No, man, you were, but, and I said, stop it. I said, yes, I am, you know, and it changed her view of how, you know, she dealt with, or, you know, the Jamaicans that she met before, whatever experiences she had, here comes another one that was different. And she's like, oh boy. You know, got to change my view now because everybody is not the same. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying, friends? Everybody is not the same. We live in a nation that is multicultural, right? It's not a situation where the local culture is even dying. No, it, it's not about that because some people fight, you know, to keep and hold on to their culture and their values. And that's fine. We get it because everybody needs to feel, you know, and a self of a sense of identity, you know, that this is who I am in terms of the culture that I'm. But if that culture is going to get in the way of God's love, you know, the way that God calls us to love, we have to check that. We have to check that. All right. It's okay to feel like this is you and this is where you belong. And, you know, this is what you know. But anything that causes us not to love our fellow brother or sister, we have to put that one through the door. We have to get rid of that. Okay, friends. So I'll leave you there with that this morning. I hope your heart and your mind has been challenged to look at things differently. Do not treat people, you know, based on how they're dressed, based on how they look, based on this, you know, get to know the people. Some people, they hear things about others and long before they meet them, they hate them. That cannot work. Don't judge people by what you heard about them until you have met them for yourself. Then you draw your own conclusions. You understand? Some people are being looked at, you know, cross-eyed and sideways by, by folks who they don't even know. All because of what they heard. Somebody tell them something. That's foolishness. As a matter of fact, to me, personally, I don't even give those situations the time of day because I always say, you know what? Ignorance exists. It does. 
and you will never be able to get rid of ignorance totally. How can you judge somebody or judge a situation that you don't even know? You don't know the people, but you don't like them. Why you don't like them? Because your friend tell you something about them. Nonsense, foolishness, I would do it in the church. You will have a conflict with one person. And when you look, five people looking at you funny. Why? Because that's the clique. That's their friend. Oh, you do my friend something. So I ain't chatting to you either. And these same people up in church speaking in tongues and all. I tell you, foolishness. We have to cut those things out. God is not pleased. We're not fooling anybody. We're not. We're not fooling anybody. Okay? Don't come with the prejudices in the church. Don't do it. Leave it somewhere. Check it at the door. Don't bring it inside. Check it somewhere. You understand? Let's do better, friends. Those who are Christians, let's pull up the bar a bit. Let's raise the bar. Let's raise our standards in God. Raising our standards in, in God doesn't mean that we're better than anybody else. It means then that we see ourselves as equals and we help each other. All right? Hear my, hear my printer there cleaning itself. The thing is not even on. <laughs> you know, let us, let us look at the way that we treat each other. We, we cannot say we love God and we don't love our fellow brother and sister. We cannot. It, no, we're fooling ourselves. It can't work, friends. Let's not do it anymore. Let's not look at people in this particular way and then you're still rubbing shoulders with them at church as if. People know when you don't like them. They see the way that you treat them. People are not stupid. They know. They know you don't like them. They know you're just talking to them because, you know, you're, you're trying to create an impression. You're trying to impress somebody. But people know. If somebody walks into a church and they're treated badly, if an usher and usher looks at them a kind of way or one, you know, they, you know it's going to turn them off. They're not going to come back. And some people wonder why we can't win the lost. No. They come in and that's why we need to clean up ourselves, clean up our act, clean it up. So that when others come in among us, we are already on the right track. So they feel welcome and they just come right in. They hear the word of God. Lives are transformed. So it's like a domino effect. We work on ourselves. Me. So it starts with me. So say, for example, I know that I have these tendencies in me. I look at myself and I say, Father, forgive me. Help me to live better. Help me to understand that I must love people if I say that I love you. Lord, help me to put away the hypocrisy from out of my heart. Because that's where it starts. A lot of people say we're hypocrites. I cannot emphasize it enough because we want to be talking and preaching, but we're not doing and we're not living. No, let's cut it out. Let's ask the Lord to help us. All right, let's ask the Lord to help us to do better, to live better, to treat people right. Put away the preconceived notions. Put away those things that you have heard. Get to know people. Develop a relationship with them. Develop a rapport with them so that you can share the gospel with them, especially the unsaved. Don't cast the boss aside because the rest of the workers, you're new on the job, and the rest of the workers are saying bad things about them. Right? Observe for yourself. Do not allow anybody to lead you astray. And, and that's the other thing too. The things start small, and then, you know, they, they join these groups and follow on and it gets bigger and then it spreads and then when you look you have one big conflict going on either at the workplace you know in the church because one person started up some foolishness that others who cannot think for themselves are joining into not knowing that they're displeasing God you know sometimes it's not all of us will be leaders per se but we are called to be an example Okay, let's be an example. Let, let's stop chatting, chatting and just start doing, doing and people will see the light of Christ in our lives. That's all I'm saying. Let's put away the prejudice, put away the preconceived notions, put away those things that do not please God. Okay, we're not impressing anybody. We, we might impress our clique, 
but we're not impressing God. And if he's not pleased with us, it doesn't matter what our clique thinks about us or our fan club. If we're not pleasing the master, it does not matter who our yes people around us tell us. Okay, it would be good if our friends would be honest with us and say, you know, friend, I love you, you know, but I want you to stop gossip with me. Stop telling me about this person. Stop talking about them. Stop it. I don't want to hear it anymore. I love you. Yes, you're my friend, but cut it out. And let's hold each other accountable. If you see me come to you and start the gossip, say, damn, stop it. Stop it, man. It's not you on, 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 on Facebook preaching every day. Cut it out, Diane. All right? Because we're here to help each other. And if we're true to ourselves, you admit it. And you say, boy, sorry. I, yes, I'm guilty. Let's stop the pretending, man. Okay? Let's stop the pretending. Let's come clean. And ask the Lord to help us where we know for a fact we need help. Because we're not fooling anybody. Maybe ourselves. We're not fooling anybody and we're certainly not fooling God because he's the ultimate and the righteous judge. Okay, so I'll definitely leave that there now and let's pray. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives within us, that helps us to live right. Lord, you taught us in your word today that we should put away prejudice, put away those things that cause people to feel a, a, a kind of way when they come in our presence, when they come into our gatherings. Help us, oh God, not to put some people up on a pedestal while we hate and push others aside. Help us, oh God, to recognize the error of our ways. Help us to understand that we have not been getting this thing right. And help us, mighty God, to be true to ourselves. To be able to admit when we're not going right. Lord, help us to come to you and say, Father, forgive us. For we did not know what we were doing. Help us to live right. Help us to treat each other with love, with dignity, with respect. Help us, Lord, not to cast a certain people aside while we embrace this set over here. Help us to have victory in our lives, even in the smallest areas. Sometimes, Lord, these are the things that cause us to be defeated. Help us to understand why we are struggling so much at times, because we're not doing it your way. We're not doing it according to your will and according to your instructions. You have instructed us, oh God, very plainly today in your word. Help us to follow Help us, mighty God, to heed your words. Help us to understand, Lord, that you have put your word there as our manual, as our instruction guide. So help us, Father, to live better, to do better, to live right, to treat people right, to love them, to cause them to feel welcome in our space and in our lives, Lord. I thank you. Even your very word, Lord, says that we should be not hearers only because we deceive our own selves. So help us to put into practice everything that we have heard and we have read from your word. Those things, oh God, that you have commanded us to do. So I thank you now, Lord, that we will take some time to evaluate evaluate our own lives, look at our own lives to see where we have been going wrong and desire, oh God, to go right. So Father, bless your people today. Help us to extend mercy one to another. Help us to forgive one another. Help us, oh God, to understand that we have to practice here and now that life that we intend to live with you. Help us to get it, Lord. When we mess up, help us not to run in the opposite direction, but to come to you and say, forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned. And then, Lord, cause us to arise and go again, to run this race again. Run it with patience. 
not to condemn anyone or to feel condemnation ourselves. Cause us, O oh God, to arise above the onslaught of the enemy, above those things that he would bring to our lives to cause us to feel like we're defeated. But Lord, we know that he's a liar. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and gave himself as a ransom for us. So help us, Lord, to understand that you died for all, but it's just for people to accept you. So I thank you now, God, for making that change in our lives. We want to change. Help us, Lord, to desire that change so that it can take place. So Lord, bless us now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we can do this. All right? We can love people. We can put aside our preconceived notions. We can experience victory in God. We can live above the gutter situations that try to drag us down. When the enemy comes with his suggestions that we know he's a liar. We have the power resident in us to resist him. Say no. One of the ways we resist the devil, friends, is to live right. When he said go wrong, you say, uh-uh, I'm going with Christ. I'm going God's way. Sometimes we slip, you know, but when just maintain that attitude where you know if you're not doing it right, if you're not going right, you say, Lord, help me. Don't, don't pretend and come go on like, you know, we, <laughs> we, we, we reach. We don't reach anywhere yet. We're still here. Every day we move forward. It, it would be good if we can take like two steps forward and no steps back. But even if we, let's not do two steps forward and six steps back, there comes a time when we have to get serious with God. And we say, Lord, I'm going with you. I'm going your way. All right. So that's my encouragement for you today. Just want to greet my people as usual. Sometimes I miss some names because, you know, the, the things just scroll and so on. But to God be the glory. This morning, I just want to say hello to you, Sister Carleen. Hi, Carleen. Carleen, Nikki, good morning to you. God bless you. Sister Karima, God bless you, woman of God. Shanika James, my friend over there in Virgin Garda. Sister Cindy, God bless you and your girls. God bless you today. All right, may the Lord bless you. Sister Rexella, God bless you. All right, Mr. 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 Hanley, God bless you. God bless you, really. La, La Pac, yes, you too. God bless you. Sister Angela, God bless you, my friend. How are things in the Bahamas? <laughs> Hope to return soon. Yes, we're passing that way again soon. Hope to see you when we do. We'll give you details on that. Suzette, God bless you. All right, all my friends in Jamaica, may the Lord bless you. Marion, you're so far away, Marion, but I give God thanks for you. You join in from time to time. God bless you. Charmaine, may the Lord bless you today. Karen, Auntie Sandrine, God bless you. All right. Yes, my other friend, C, I have two C's here. Yes, my other friend, Carleen, God bless you. God bless you today. All right, Alicia, may the Lord bless you. Sister Julia, God bless you. Sister Martel, <laughs> I get a little excited, you know, when I see my people here, my friends, you know, people who pray for me, people who say, Diane, you can do this. You know, thank you for the words of encouragement and you all encourage me, you motivate me to go on for God because God knows we all need that. All right, Kashina, God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. Kashina Cornwall, you are a mighty, mighty woman of God. All right? I know you know it, but I'm just telling you. God bless you. Wendell Jr., God bless you. God bless you, son. Patricia Smith, God bless you. Sister Jackie, brother Will. Yes, looking forward to that cruise. Yes, man. All right? Um, some people have been even still checking with me about that. This, the... There's a little space. I mean, I see one and two rooms left back there because you can continue to be a part of a group as long as the ship is not sold out, right? So there's still a few rooms left for those who are interested in that cruise in December. 
where Sister Jacqueline Richardson and her husband, Brother Will, they're going to be speakers at our one day seminar on board entitled Kingdom Empowerment. All right. That's December 16th to the 22nd. We're going to Nassau, Bahamas, the Half Moon Key, which is Carnival's uh, private island in the Bahamas. We're going to the Turks and Caicos Islands and we're going to the Dominican Republic. Quite a few of us have done La Romana, but we're going to the north this time. We're going to Puerto Plata. All right. So if you are still interested, you can still join us. I'm just putting a plug in there for that. Our good friend Sherry McNamara. I don't know why you don't just move to Tartola and come live by McNamara with us. Sister Sherry, God bless you. Sister Myrna, God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Hope you're keeping your reading up. All right. So all of you friends, I just want to let you know how special you are. Simone, God bless you. All right. John, John, your name is love. <laughs> God bless you. Val, may the Lord bless you. Attorney Stacy, you notice I'm not troubling about this lawyer girl, but I love you all so very much. Kelly, you know, you, some of you are very, very supportive, not just in one way, but some of you are our customers. You know, you support our businesses and you, you just support. And I love that. And in any way, shape or form that I can support you in your endeavors and what you're doing, you know, please let me know. Let me know what you're, what you're doing and that you may need, you know, a word out. I'll give a shout out for you. All right. Hey, is this Becky? Good morning, Becky. Good morning, B. Love you. <laughs> Shernet, my sister from another mother over there in Virgin God. God bless you. All of you. Sister Cheryl, God bless you. Sister Cheryl always has a prayer for somebody. Cranique, God bless you, Cranique Dawkins. May the Lord bless you today. Right, sister Eustacia, God bless you, Pastor. Good morning and God bless you. Joy, God bless you. All of you, Sonia. Right, I'm running out of time now, running out of names. Lizelle, Newton, what? Long time people, right? Who, are, who have been a part of my life for a very long time. So may the Lord bless you today. May he cause you to be victorious in everything you do. May he cause you to walk uprightly, walk in a way that pleases him. And when you start to experience his blessing and his favor on your life, that you would extend it to others because that's how it works it's a cycle you know you do you do well you do right yes the troubles are there the struggles are there but you hang on to God and as he blesses your life just bless somebody else that's how it works okay so take care take care take care remember that God loves you and he wants the very best for you all right and until we meet again in this fashion you know I always ask you to take care